Band. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. There. Would you all please rise for the pledge of the flag? Oops, I'm sorry. This is like a dance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. Uh, we will start the uh, meeting. First of all, we want to talk about um, just kind of good things that have been happening in the district, and there are many for us to talk about. So if any of the board members have something they want to share or you want me to go first? Um, I'll talk about the Nesties. We had the Nesties this week where we honored um, a teacher at the middle, the high, middle, high, and elementary. We also honored um, national and area winners and, and um, teachers that had gotten some awards. And so it was a great thing. Um, we have not been back. It's an alumni event that the foundation has, is, is overseeing. And Bill did a great job. He was a very good MC. Um, and I felt, when I left there, I felt that the teachers felt honored. And that was what our goal was. So it was a really cool event. So that was this week. Um, I'm hoping. Next year, we will put it on your calendar. I think it's April the 13th, correct? And do we have a speaker that you can talk about? Yes. Ooh, yes. Yes. So Jerry Brooks is a really funny guy if you ever see him on things. He has kind of a funny way of looking at things. So um, very excited. He's an educator. So put that on your calendar for April 13th, correct? And it's at the mess hall. Okay. Anything else? You um, I was going to say it's great to see uh, the middle school. The eighth grade group is getting to go back to D.C. Um, so that trip rolls out bright and early on Thursday morning. Um, I will be on bus four. So um, <laughs> that's really exciting besides the 4 a.m. start. Um, so it's, it is, once again, another great thing that is a tradition that unfortunately we know um, some classes missed due to the last two years, but I'm glad to see that we're renewing it and it should continue. So we could ask people that did that trip to raise their hands and maybe give you some pointers. Well, they yeah, survive. yeah, maybe gave yes. That gives me hope. That's right, it does. We can give you some pointers you about me? that. <laughs> okay. Only thing I had, and uh, actually, someone can uh, check me on the date, but I saw this today. I'm going off memory, but I believe the district art show is next week, right? The 26th? 26th. At the high school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. District art show, high school for all the schools, on display, 26th. In the evening, 6 to 8, is that mm -hmm. right? 6 to 8. Thank you. Okay. So a couple, of, a couple other things we're, we're going to honor tonight, FCCLA and our Odyssey of the Mind uh, students. So we'll, we'll get a little bit more detail when, when they come up in just a few minutes. FBLA had a state winner for their community service project, which we're very proud of, and probably see them next next week. Um, our our governor school representation is is something to be exceptionally proud of this year. We're we're going to have eight students uh, represent the, the high school as as governor scholar in their GSP program, four in the governor school for entrepreneurship, and eleven students in uh, Governor School for the Arts. And so that's something really to be proud of. <laughs> Super exciting stuff. Um, lots, of, I want to say a special thank you to all of the, the parent volunteers uh, for the Prom de Don, another amazing event um, this past weekend. Um, you know, whether it's Casino playing at one in the morning or uh, basketball and volleyball. The, the kids had a, a great time, but it was just a really fantastic example of, of what our community does uh, to, to support our students. So, so thanks to all that helped with that. Um, we say good luck. By the time that we meet next, we'll be starting state testing, AP testing. So we wish everybody best of luck there. Uh, but then also keep your calendars on, on your phones handy because we have color runs and Taste of Moyer this week and the booster a -thon run and just a whole variety of things happening throughout, uh, throughout the district. So, so fire it up. There's something to do just about every night. Exciting must, time. Must be April or May. It is. That's right. Okay. All right. 
Um, the next thing we'd like to do is to honor the Odyssey of the Mind State winners. Um, so will the um, coaches come up here and you want to do the high school one first? Is it Terry Beth Smith? And bring your people up. Come on, people. No. I will let them tell you a little bit. That's um, awesome. That's what like, we'd like. So I'm Terry Beth Smith. I'm the coach for the high, one of the high school teams. Uh, we had two high school teams this year. They both qualified. Um, but this team won the state division for problem three. And they'll tell you a little bit about the problem that they did. There are five different problems you can choose. The problem that they did, and it was really interesting. This, If there's ever been a problem for them, it's been this year. Um, and we are going to attend the world finals in Iowa at the end of May. And the la last year they came in seventh in the world, which was virtual. So they have high hopes. If you're sixth or up, you get honored. So that's oh, that's a goal. No pressure, guys. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't come back. But yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that's it. So I'll mm -hmm. have Claudia. This is Stacy Contreras. She runs the whole show. So I'm trying to get okay. out of that. But um, one thing I did want to mention um, for, because I do the district sponsorship, and this year is my last year going in, so my son is a senior. We're joining. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the one thing when I started this year, Gail, the kids, I asked them, I said, what do you want out of Odyssey? Because I'll do whatever you tell me because that's what we do. And they said they wanted Fort Thomas to be known as an OM school. We had gone years sitting on the gym floor waiting for the announcement of the winners, and we never got called. It was disheartening. But things changed in fifth grade. They came in first, and they've been sailing ever since. So now this year, we have six teams of OM wow. students. We had one in the primary, the kindergarten through second grade, for one Smith Moyer. We also had two Division One for the third grade through fifth grade. Um, they were both at Moyer. One came in 12th at state. The other one came in second. We also had the middle school team, which came in first for their province. And then we had the two high school teams, which finished first and third. So our name got called a lot. So we had several people that I overheard, and they're like, oh, great, we're going to the Fort Thomas team. And I was thinking, yes! <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to go in alphabetical order. <laughs> and tell them how many years you've been doing OM and what you do. So the first one is Samuel Contreras. Um, hi there. I'm Samuel Contreras, her son. Um, I've been doing OM for 12 years now. Um, it's been a major part of my life and one of my favorite things in Fort Thomas schools. Our problem this year was a musical. Uh, no, you're a historical figure. Can you repeat your name? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, so we chose Timothy Dexter, who was a colonial American businessman who made all of his deals through dumb luck um, and wound up very, very rich. Uh, hi, I'm Elijah Smith. Um, I'm, I've, my mom's the coach. I've also done um, OM since, uh, for 12 years. I've done it since first grade. Um, so for Timothy Dexter, uh, so as Sam mentioned, he was a colonial entrepreneur and um, one of the many eccentric things he did was he faked his death um, to see how people would react to his death and when they didn't cry enough, he uh, punished them. Um, but uh, so we decided to like take that moment as our like crux of our performance. since fifth grade, so that one year that we actually won for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I was just one of the sort of extras that we needed to sing along during the whole performance. Uh, hmm. so. Okay, Ravi, this is Timothy Dexter's adult. Oh. Yeah, so hi, I'm Ravi. You can. 
episode, Timothy Dexter. Um, yeah, one of the, I guess one of the cool things that we did for our skit was, uh, I got to, like, jump out of a fake coffin. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's about all I have. Yeah. <laughs> and Robin, you sat in Dexter. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm the only junior on the team, and I've been doing it since fifth grade. Um, and I wrote the song um, with uh, those two. Um, <laughs> um, I had to impromptu learn how to play the ukulele in one night before a competition because um, I had no idea how to play before, and then I had to play that in competition, which was fine. But. Um, uh, I also, I was the narrator character, so I was um, the officiator of the funeral slash priest. I was also a painting, and then I was also Napoleon Bonaparte in a statue form. Um, and it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I, uh, I really enjoyed doing OM, and um, we put a lot of work into this one. It was our last one together as a team, um, and we had a lot of fun, so yeah. So, as you can tell, they, so the great thing about OM is they, they do it all. I, I really do nothing except, um, my, what was my thing? You have to be under time, you have to be under eight minutes. <laughs> that was like, but everything else, they do. They come up with the script, they come up with the, the props, everything, and this one was particularly challenging because it did have to be a musical. And um, one of the things that we were told, which was great, we were one of the few teams in the whole world, actually, that kind of got, they, they did all their own original songs, plus words. So it wasn't a parody, it was all original. Um, there was a rap, there was an emotional number, and then the opening scene. Um, so I was incredibly impressed with them. We have a few things we're gonna, gonna work on, but yes, we, uh, we realized that the, literally the last minute, you had to have music, a lot, a lot of ours were just words, so you had to have music, and she was like, oh, learn to play the ukulele. And I was like, all righty. <laughs> and then we had to find a ukulele, so we were texting, we found a ukulele, and she learned uh, literally overnight, um, and it was excellent. So the one other thing I wanted to note, uh, we did have two scholarship winners for, um, obviously, the Maya Kentucky, um, Eliza won, and then Patty Sieberty, who has been on and off our team. He wasn't able to compete this year, um, but Taddy also won. I think he did it for 10 years? 10 years. So we were very honored to have them um, awarded at the, the state. So we'll let you know how worlds go. Cool. Now when you do worlds, will it be a lot of the same things or will you redo? Okay. Uh, so there's uh, two portions of the student line. There's the long term, which uh, is like our performance aspect and that you keep throughout all the competitions. And then there's also another bit called spontaneous, which mm -hmm. is kind of like a mini problem that you're given like right on the spot and you have to do it. So yeah. And you can, you can, you can keep the same problem, but you can change it. So you can improve, like you take the feedback that they give you and then, you know, improve where you can so that you can probably do it better. But it's the same long-term problem. And I'm excited to see because the thing was, it all has to be, Somebody that should have been known in this group, but it's not. So th this is hilarious. The people that came yeah. up with, I'm like, this is insane. So this guy sent. Well, tell us what two things that he did, and then we'll go. Uh, so he uh, collected all the loose cats in the Colonial Bay area, and then sent them to the Caribbean. Um, but it turns out they had a rat problem, so that actually really helped. And then <laughs> he collected a bunch of bed warmers, and also sent that to Jamaica, which they don't need bed warmers. But they, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, they use the metal elastic ladle. Um, <laughs> so he just got a bunch, yeah. yeah. And also, he was completely illiterate, but he wrote a book called um, uh, Pickle for the Knowing Ones. 
uh, and it's completely unintelligible, and there's like, he didn't put any punctuation in it, and so at the end, he just put like four pages of just periods and commas and semicolons, and said that if you wanted grammar, you could paste it into the book. Funny. I have no idea. Is there not a song about that? Uh, <laughs> this was to do with my character. I played his wife, um, who he married, and he was about 16 years younger than her for her money, um, which was his really jumping off point for the business venture. Okay, married well. For part of it. But yeah. He said it in yeah. He did sell cats. Oh, he also bought worthless continental currency. And then when the U.S. government finally, you know, took over and was managed to repay them, he made a lot of money because he bought worthless currency. Okay. He actually didn't sound as well, though, for his age, if you want to know. He mm -hmm. wrote in his application on May 25 on his mailbox, and May he went to post it. So, yeah. so yes, he's a strange man. But he also had cats in the garden, and that's where he goes to do at the end. And he has, he has like, Napoleon Bonaparte, John Hancock, and Tim George Washington, and then It's, it's really exciting that you guys are, are here. I, you were here about a year ago, I think. So, so that was, that's really awesome to see us continue. And, and I love the saying on your shirts of, of think beyond the box, because that's really what you're doing. You're, you're not afraid to, to take some risks, take some creative uh, approaches, and, and it's paying off. It shows that, uh, uh, that when, you, uh, when you tackle new problems, really great things happen. So thanks for representing our, our district well, and uh, we know that you'll uh, represent us well in Iowa. You probably have a lot of these, but we have shirts. I know. We have shirts. It's fine. Thank you. Work them into the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then it's, it's Sarah Hume and Dan Osegi. Are you going to introduce your group? Absolutely. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love those two. I mean, <laughs> okay. Our problem was the whole global warming. Oh, not global warming, but like bad stuff in the environment. And we did, and we had this whole skit. It was kind of like thrown together. Well, instead of having like the kind of lame things like global warming, we had a giant flea monster. Which is kind of more fun, yeah. uh -huh. and we had, and we had like a scientist trying to fix it, and we had, and, the, and I think the main thing was the, was the uh, building we did for our skit. Uh, it was really fun. We had a bunch of naked sets. We had a, a wheel we made, and and puppets and stuff. And it, it was pretty fun to do. Thank you. 
Um, I've been in Odyssey for eight years or so, I think. No, eight years? Eight years? Goodness. Um, so at least, at least eight. Um, this year we did the problem. Uh, we had like the tree monster, but the tree monster wasn't just caused by just him just being mutants or whatever. Uh, we also had like baking soda, and we had to include baking soda in our performance. So it was like a parasitic infection causing the tree monster. So that was really fun to make up, like try to figure out a way to include everything. Oh. That was nice. Um, like what Dawson said, uh, the engineering aspect was also really nice. Like we had to make a water wheel, uh, so we had to figure out how the crank worked. I had to figure out how the crank worked because I didn't know how it worked. So we can also teach each other how to like do stuff, which is nice, teamwork. So I think that's a good thing to work on. Mm -hmm. okay. Very cool. last year this is my first year doing it with this same team so like Julian and Duncan and Tim said our project was about like pollution in the environment and how we can change that and try to make it better so that's what our invention was was a, like like Julian said was like a wheel with a crank that would filter out uh, the parasitic infection so yeah and uh, part of what I really enjoyed about it was making uh, the tree costume for Madden so a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a real, really fun time this year and I uh, look forward to doing it next year. Hello, hi, I'm Sudar Tejani. I've been doing Odyssey for 12 years and my favorite part is the performance and typically towards the end of the performance because you have this ending line and usually it's timed because it's just kind of this iconic around because if you go overtime, which is eight minutes, the the judges say time to end you, but instead we say time to end the performance for ourselves. And just the relief that all your hard work <laughs> of <the laughs> eight months has just paid off <laughs> and you, you did it almost perfectly because it all came together in the last moment. And so my favorite part about our performance as a team was that we have one I've been doing it since first, second grade, I believe. Second grade. Um, and all the way from with this is a game year, guys. Um, but I'd say my favorite memory of this year was probably when uh, I remember. I think it was when we were. I think it was when we were writing the script. I walked up to whether it was you or Quinn, and I I had to bring in a number, and one of you said forty two. So we went nineteen. Oh, I just want to say, uh, yeah, the guys worked really hard. At the beginning of the year, we were supposed to win uh, DreamWorks over Tim and Tim said, hey, tell them I'm doing that. So they got together on a computer twice a week and uh, worked on things they could do, like uh, scripts and uh, just uh, general ideas at that point. And, uh, and then when we finally got to meet in person, they really uh, worked really hard. So one meeting, uh, Ms. Hume, she brought in some materials that, and that's what most schools do, they bring in materials so the team can work together to figure out what we want to do. So she brought in balloons, PVC pipe, and then I think I brought in a doll. And we just tried playing around with the balloons because we knew we needed live uh, music for our performance. So uh, we started with like, you know, making uh, the noise in front of the balloons, you blow them up, you let them go in the room, they spin around, we thought it'd be cool. And then we started like looking up stuff, like trying to figure out what noises we can make with balloons. And we landed on an idea of making an instrument out of a balloon. So we attached a balloon as like the reed of the saxophone 
to a PVC pipe and squeeze it. And then on the balloon nozzle, we added a straw for like the mouthpiece. And then we would blow into it and get like this nice bassoon like bass type of uh, sweet music. So uh, I think about a week before performance, uh, we started practicing with it, seeing who could play it the best. And then at the thing, we played like probably say a week or six weeks straight with it. So that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> and we were able to get three different notes out of it. So there you go. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think um, it, it's such a cool thing. And for me, I can see your joy. I'm sure you laugh a whole lot. I can't even believe when the balloons were flying around. I mean, that's like middle school boy heaven, you know, with balloons flying around. So, yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So congratulations. Congratulations. Well, we have some shirts and certificates for you. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, the next they can leave. Okay. The next we're going to uh, talk about FCCLA. And so I want to ask Aaron Wagner to come up with your people. Did you know that historical creature, that historical goddess? Julie, did you? Yeah. So. Welcome. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> to do, um, we went in January to Samantha Reynolds, who's a third grade teacher at Woods Elementary, which is also kind of like our junior team head coach. We went to her room and we taught kids about social, mental, and physical health for COVID. And then we had them help us create these little goodie bags uh, and decorate them and fill them. And then we brought them over to the healthcare workers over at Christ Hospital in Cincinnati. And me and Eddie went to do them ourselves. <laughs> um, but they were really grateful for that, and it was really awesome to see the kids kind of get involved in something that was different. Very cool. Hey, so my name's Kate Karras. This is only my second year on FCCLA, and I competed in job interview. So I had to brainstorm a job that met with my current like skill level, and then I basically created and filled out an extremely extensive application. It was a binder with about 40 pages filled of like my skill sets and all my work experience and qualifications. So I um, fake applied for a office, office assistant at State Farm 
and I had a 20 minute um, in-person interview with some SCCLA judges and, and that was my event. My name is Madeline Dragowski. I have been in SCCLA for now four years. I completed an early childhood education where basically prior to competing, um, I put together a portfolio with all of my experience and coursework that I've done in my early childhood um, education career pathway, which was Wagner and Highland. Then I created this supply bin. In the supply bin, I could, like it was like this big, it was yay big, and I could say everything I wanted to be able to use to create a lesson on the spot once I got to compete. So basically, I spent a lot of time preparing, thinking, okay, this is my topic, which was ABCs and numbers, so what can I do with this? So I went in, and then they gave me like a um, like a prompt, and then I had to create a lesson plan, and then show with the judges, this is what I would do, and then I taught it to them as if they were my preschoolers, and so um, that's, that was my event. Amazing. Nice, that is nice. Yeah, that's way harder than my interviews used to be. Yeah. <laughs> so how does it work when you go to San Diego now? You have to make changes, updates? Is it new? Okay, so when you go to nationals, you basically revise your project. Mm -hmm. But when you present your project, the judges will look criticism and just things that you can like work on to make your project better. And then when you make it to nationals, you revise and edit, and then you will also present it again in person in front of judges and compete to win. So your um, lesson plan on a fly, are you going to be a teacher? Yeah, I okay. did early childhood education at UC. Awesome. Keep, keep all that. That's nice. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. So. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Anybody ever been to San Diego? Okay. It's about pretty much the perfect weather. So have a wonderful, wonderful time. Good. So congratulations on being our state champions, and, and I can't think of a better place to go to San Diego for our next round. So uh, you'll represent us well, and thank you again for coming. Can we have shirts and shirts? Shirts again. Yep. Okay, the next section is the Woodville Student Showcase. So, okay, they're coming up. That's awesome. Let, let us help you with that microphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we just, she's like, I don't need, I don't need your help. I'll probably do it handheld, I bet. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's good. Courageous leaders solve problems. Hello, my name is Samantha Wynn Statter, and I am here this evening with Lottie Williams and Johnny Jessen Hughes. We are third grade students from Woodville Elementary School, and Miss Hicks, Miss Lamantia, and Miss Rothschild. We would like to tell you how we are taking steps to solve the problem of food deserts in our community. Are you wondering, what is a food desert? A food desert is a neighborhood where its residents have little or no access to a healthy, fresh food. Do food deserts cause health problems? Yes, only two out of every three adults in greater Cincinnati are obese or overweight. One in two adults 
they have diabetes by 2050. Do health problems cost money? Yes. Obesity costs Americans $147 billion in 2018. Medical expenses are 42% higher for those with obesity. Do people not have access to fresh produce? Yes, more than 23.5 million Americans do not have access to a grocery store within one mile of their house and must spend more time traveling there. Mrs. Fenner has helped us with planning our design for our class. We will also create paintings with her. Go Earth Girl! While our Earth is learning, we use the class of our supplies to help us determine how to craft our project. We will also use makeup recipes and make rescue pellets from food with our arms. Off to the market we go. Next, we await our advertising of the Mr. Farmer's Market. We want to reach out with flyers and videos. We hope to generate a profit to a local food bank that provides fresh food and bread rescue. We hope to see you at our booth in the back. Will you guys come up and answer a few questions for us? <laughs> Have you all ever planted anything before and grown, grown things? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, we, we have a garden that we haven't been working on in a while. Okay. So you guys are going to have to set the cost for what you sell, the oregano, the parsley. Mm -hmm. What are some things you're going to have to think about when it, it comes to setting that price? Because um, you, you want to make some money to give to the food bank. So tell me a little bit about that because it sounds like there's a lot of economics in this. And then you two, what if you set it really high? Is, is that potentially an issue? What could be wrong with that?
smile at them and ask whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best thing that you learned from Farmer Eric? Um, probably just the time you made and how yeah. you taught a lot of the time you made and all that stuff for us. Yeah. What did he grow? What's he grow on his farm? Um, he grows bikes, so I have like two acres of farm. Oh, he does. Yeah, take care of um, reindeer and that goat cow and all that stuff. And he grows corn. Well, thank you for coming and uh, telling us about your project. And uh, it's not easy to get up in front of adults and to present some. And you did awesome. You did awesome. You did great. You did great. <laughs> and that booth will be open in May, right? right. At the farmer's okay. market? Okay. Yes. All right, I'm coming up. Okay. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. We have some shirts. We do. Oh, thank you guys for that. I know. Okay, the next section of the board meeting is a community forum, and let me read the opening statement. The community forum portion of the meeting of the Board of Education is an opportunity for members of the community to informally address the board about a variety of topics, including issues for future consideration. Since the topics raised may not be issues listed and advertised on the public agenda, the community forum is not intended to be a setting for dialogue with the board. Of, with the board. Direct questions may be referred to the appropriate dis, district personnel for future responses, answered briefly if a matter of procedure or tabled as they may be future agenda items. Speakers who have registered at the reception area are asked to identify themselves, state the reason for addressing the board. Please address the board as a whole through the chairperson rather than individual members. Um, if um, We have less than five, so if you could keep it to you know three minutes um, with, with your um, presentation and um, I want to, to also talk about, um, please make sure that we're not talking about students, employees, community members, can't be discussed in open meetings, okay? All right, so my first one is Myrna um, Eads. Thank you very much. Um, first off, I'd like to say, uh, what I want to talk to you all about is the portrait of a graduate. And just seeing these kids, wow, I mean, I'm just blown away. definitely working in our community. However, um, with the indoctrination of critical race theory and some of the other issues that have come up that our federal government has too much hold in the curriculum uh, of our kids. And I'm not saying that every school has this issue. Some are more blatant than others. Um, and I'm sure you guys you know, have heard all across the country, there, there's issues. And not every teacher is indoctrinating our children. Um, but also not every teacher knows what is going on. And for instance, in Portrait of a Graduate, when I was looking, the, the five principles that you guys are doing, the two that, that have most concern for me, one is the curious critical thinker. And it states that it initiates questions and communication about subjects of general interest. There's a lot that can go into that play. You know, it, it depends on the class, it depends on the teacher, what is going to be considered general interest. 
Um, it uses resources to explore and expand personal curiosities and acquire information. What resources are being used and do we have guidelines as to those resources? Um, and it uses a sense of wonder when I observe, observe excuse me, <laughs> observing and generating personal learning opportunities beyond personal interests. So my concern there is children who are not interested in certain topics, but the class, you know, one or two students is, how is that being conducted? Um, under the empathetic collaborator, it teaches others in the group how to have growth mindset, which I agree with, you know, those concepts. But again, I think there has to be certain guidelines because, you know, one, who is the teacher that's teaching this? You know, what's their background in? You know, as parents, we, if you will, indoctrinate our kids in, into our beliefs, but then they get into a setting, and if there is um, a discussion on diverse ideas, opinions, and perspectives, that's part of the empathetic collaborator. Kids that may see that there's, that, that how they were grown up, it's a less popular opinion, maybe may feel like, oh, I don't want to speak up against this because then my classmates might hate me or, or whatever. Um, so I just think that within our portrait of a graduate, there needs to be more defined guidelines as to these issues, okay? There is a documentary film out um, that was just put out, um, I believe it's March 14th. It's called Whose Children Are They? Um, and it can be brought to the community uh, free of charge. You just have to charge ticket prices to view it. And I would ask that the board perhaps consider bringing that and we can show it at the PAC um, and see if, you know, what parents, teachers, you know, who, who want to come and see it. And, it. and it talks about critical race theory and the indoctrination of our children. And I just, my, my whole agenda here is just to protect our children um, from, you know, kindergarten all the way up through um, their senior years. You know. so, thank you. Hold on one sec. Thank I got you. a question for you. Are you, do you have a complaint about something that we're doing now? Or are you talking about? I'm bringing it up as an issue. That's happening um, here? I've looked at the, the CRT, um, w what all that is teaching, and then mm -hmm. looking at the portrait of a graduate. Um, I do have a senior, um, and he has brought up some issues uh, to me. But it's not per se a complaint, it's just we're, I think some are teetering right on that edge, and I just don't want to see us go So you're not talking about four times schools then. Uh, and the reason I'm asking I, is I'm because you dropped four times schools in the aspect that right now I think we're on the right path, but with <clears> these <throat> principles in place, we don't have those strict guidelines. And I mean, we we all know it's not a secret. We have had teachers that have had inappropriate relationships with students. We've had sexual offenders. Um, so, my concern is what if one of those was teaching these principles without any guidelines? Are they going to use resources of pornography or whatever? Their opinions are brought into the classroom. And I don't want to see Fort Thomas schools go in that direction. So, you're just going off what if scenarios. I, I would suggest you, that. You could say it's what if, but how about let's prevent it from happening? I would suggest that maybe staying off some of those conspiracy sites and directing right. them towards uh, this us. This isn't a conspiracy site. site. Um, this is, um, I'm not the only one, I'm not the only parent in Fort Thomas schools that has a problem with portrait of a graduate. Um, I might be the only one speaking here tonight of it, but I know that there's another school board meeting where parents have brought the concern. My, again, my concern is that I just want to make sure that our children are protected, and that we don't go off the, the deep end and, and be like the schools in some of the bigger cities, um, and we protect our children. You're running for an office? I am, but that has nothing to do with this. 
as a, as a registered se. Republican, okay. I would be scared that you would be elected. I'll just well, say that. That is your opinion. And I appreciate your opinion, but I mean, I don't think that, you know, according to the guidelines, I'm not supposed to attack school board members or teachers, and I feel like you're attacking me. Well, I, I'm just so. questioning why you're bringing up things that aren't happening here. and. Things that are ha maybe happening but it's elsewhere. But in portrait of a graduate, and You're I'm asking, do we have strict guidelines as to using the resources to explore and expand personal curiosities and acquire information? Do we have strict guidelines that tell the teacher you cannot use pornography types, you cannot use certain books? I'm pretty sure we have no pornography in our schools. We do not. I agree. But Jefferson County Schools have them in their library. But I'm saying every school district is different, and I just want to make sure that Fort Thomas Independent Schools does not go down that road. And if you disagree with me, I'm sorry, but this is about the children, not about your field. You know, I, I would share some of your concerns relative to pornography and things like that, but I don't look at portrait of a graduate as falling into that category. You're basically taking the bullet points there that we have under portrait of a graduate and set in channeling them towards your concerns or your I agree, calls. but it, that means I, I, I look at the terms rather generically, and you can interpret things any way you want to. Right. I know that but that I'm was asking, never... Is there a sure, but there was never the design and the intent for that from the beginning. Oh, I understand. And, and you, know, you, you can run this thing down a, a rat hole forever, I and mean, you can't... We can't put protections in for every single possible thing. We have to use some common sense. We have to believe that our teachers, our educators will do the same, and I truly believe they will. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be on top of it and have concerns, and, and, and obviously, but I don't see us make you know, sure revising the entire portrait of a graduate no, 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 uh, scenario that. so that we have every possible negative scenario covered. It's just unrealistic, it's time consuming, and it's not what we're all about. I mean, we're about educating kids. Right, I, and I understand that. But is there guidelines in place to make sure that a teacher with more secular worldly views doesn't come in and go, oh, it says I can use resources, so I'm going to run my chance? I, Who, who's I, I, I can assure you that, that, that we have mechanisms and systems in place to make sure that, that there's an appropriateness in the curriculum, there's an appropriateness in the pedagogy, and there's an appropriateness in the oversight. Um, of our teachers and, and, and what students are exposed to. And, and the Portrait of a Graduate was, was uh, a highly collaborative experience with, with many perspectives, including business community, parent, um, and school personnel really working together to see what employers are looking for uh, in, 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 the, uh, you know, in, in our graduates. And again, that's why it's the portrait of a graduate and what we're hoping our students are prepared for. But I can assure you that your concerns would be, would be closely vetted and we'd always hear your voice and I appreciate you coming. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay, Toby Varlin. I appreciate the opportunity to come address you as you may. I wrote on my sheet I wanted to talk to the board about some of the recent legislation that's been uh, passed in Kentucky. Um, specifically, I'd like to hear at some point, I know tonight's probably not tonight from the board, on its feelings on the charter school legislation, which I'm no expert. I assume you guys know a lot more than I do about it. But everything I've read says all it can do is siphon funding away from our school districts. It, I don't see any way it can help us. And my fear is that I didn't see a lot of leadership, especially public leadership, coming from you guys as this legislation was being debated and discussed, like there was from other local school districts where there were superintendents publicly encouraging people to not let this happen. You know, the bill sponsor targeted the Louisville area and he targeted Northern Kentucky specifically as an educational desert, which I take great offense to. I don't think that's the case at all, especially in our city here. And I sit here tonight and watch these kids from Odyssey of the Mind and FCCLA, and if students leave our district, if 1% of the students leave our district, our district is gonna lose at least $100,000 in state funding. 
you know, that we're already facing shortfalls from the SEEK adjustments this year. And if there's another $100,000 siphoned out of the budget, if programs like FCCLA and Odyssey of the Mind that unlike sports and theater and some of the bigger programs don't have booster organizations that are gonna be cut and we're gonna lose those opportunities for kids. Um, so I'd love to hear if there's been any you know, planning or any thoughts on how we may avoid negative repercussions to this legislation that's been passed. I also would love to hear something from the district or the board on the, uh, the legislation that relates to what's allowed to be taught in classrooms in terms of the, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the dog whistle racism policies talking about banning CRT and banning other, you know, discussions of gender or sexuality or any of that from the classroom because if the state level Republicans have their way, then Ms. Eads concerns aren't gonna be relevant because you guys are gonna be legislated in terms of what's allowed to be discussed in the classroom. Um, I just would love to hear a little bit more from the board. Again, I know that you guys have talked about the effect of the property values and you know that on district budgets, but I think that's not the only legislative issue and I'd like to hear more about that stuff. Thank you. Do you wanna take this or talk? It, yeah. It's, up, it's really up to well, the board. The first thing I would say is just yes. because uh, you may not have seen us on the news or whatever doesn't mean we haven't been working on it. A lot we, of things, yeah, yeah we've behind talked, the scenes. We've talked to our mm -hmm. legislators over and over again. I've had personal meetings with several of them. Believe me, there's well, much. Well, just bring, I did not mean to imply that you hadn't done anything. Well, you did. You implied that. I haven't seen anything publicly. Well, like I and said. I have seen things publicly from other districts. So well, I same, appreciate you saying things publicly is not always a, the best route to go. You might agree. Okay. And there are many things that give us concern right now, and charter schools is certainly one of them. Um, I think you ought to be even more concerned about the open borders circumstance because there's a lot of things that can do serious damage to our schools here financially. And I will tell you that you know, all these balls are up in the air now. I've been doing this 24 years, and I've never seen so many significant balls up in the air than there are right now. So uh, all I can tell you is I'm working behind the scenes, but I haven't had a lot of success. I appreciate it. Thank you. And, I mean, it's a significant issue. There are, there are a number of legislative topics on, on the agenda this year, many of which were passed into, into law and, and just a handful that did not. Um, we have done work behind the scenes. We have advocated and lobbied. Uh, at the same time, there's not a unified uh, public voice that is, is, is um, really on every side of these issues. And so, um, we, Charter schools have been uh, legal in the state of Kentucky since 2017. Um, the, the most recent legislation is really around uh, authorizers and new sources of revenue. Um, in many cases, we believe a, a lot of those will be found to be unconstitutional. Um, and so some of our efforts are, are there specifically around that topic. But th there are a variety of topics that if, if you would like to know what the perspective of, of our administrative team is or the board, I'd encourage you to, to send me a note. As well, I'm welcome to talk to you anytime. Yeah. Okay, and then Whitney McKay. Yeah. Uh, I'm here um, because Kelly Booth could not be here, so I'm a member. Uh, I'm the Johnson rep at for Fort Thomas Education Association, and I have three teachers I'd like to honor. Before I do that, I have to say a shout out to Whipple. Oh my goodness, those kids were amazing. I mean, uh, it doesn't really get much better than that. Um, uh, I don't know if you realize, I think you probably do. We rotate through the elementary level. Um, uh, Kelly comes up and instead of talking about five teachers, we just talk about three, one from each level. I'm gonna start at the elementary level and then I'm gonna jump to the high school and I'll end with middle school. Um, and it's Johnson's turn. And so it's my delight to highlight Katie Huber um, tonight. Um, most of us think about think of her as a veteran fifth grade math teacher, um, but a lot of people don't realize how diligent and also how creative she is in her instruction and her delivery of math to the kids. Um, recently, she partnered with Jennifer Flynn to create something called an Arts Advisory Council, which is a group of like nine to 10 fifth graders, and together they are, quote, taking 
art strategies and embedding them in her math instructions, and I have no idea what that means. I mean, I really <laughs> I, like, can't wait to get into her class and actually watch it in action. All I know is that the kids are super excited about it because they tell me about it, um, and so does Katie. Um, and I think she's sort of like a unsung hero. She's actually extraordinarily flexible, and recently, <laughs> without me asking her to do this, she was looking at next year's um, schedule. We're sort of putting together a schedule of how, like, you know, when you're going to be, when kids are going to be taking art, and they take all the specialist classes. And she's like, I figured out switches for third, fourth, and fifth grade, and I know exactly when you're going to be teaching your guidance lessons. And I was like, Hallelujah! <laughs> that's fantastic. So um, that's Katie. She's wonderful. Um, at the high school, I'm super glad Kelly Beach is not here because she would never toot her own horn. That's just not the way she rolls, and so we have a wonderful opportunity for me to highlight Kelly. Um, she has done such amazing work up at that high school. I think you guys are probably aware that she wrote a grant, um, and, or received a grant from the Fort Thomas Education Foundation on Holocaust suitcases. And what this is, is this is a primary source activity that um, she's partnering with the Nancy and David Wolf Holocaust and Humanity Center in Cincinnati. And these suitcases are coming down to the high school and it's an opportunity for kids to literally unpack a suitcase and see primary sources and hear primary sources in each suitcase. And um, it's really a strong, powerful connection with the past in a way that a teacher standing at a podium and lecturing about World War II, I think, I think it's more powerful than that. And that's Kelly. She's a breath of fresh air here, and she is up at that high school, and I love her to pieces. At the middle school, um, I'm highlighting Kristen Gerine. Um, and I can't go into a lot of detail about that. Um, today was one of those days that we dread. We lost um, a bright light in education today and that educator's daughter goes to the middle school. And there are days where I think you guys as our leaders, um, I think of you guys as like the generals and we're the soldiers, like, and there are days where you want us to like teach like our hair is on fire, which is a great book on engagement, and I love that book. And there's other days like at the end of the semester when you need us to be like a coach or a cheerleader, like pushing, not really carrying them over the line, but letting them know that they can do it, and um, there are days where we just sometimes have to carry the kids, and today was one of those days, and she did that, and um, it's my honor to work with all three of these wonderful ladies, and I'm honored to be a part of Fort Thomas Independent Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whitney, I, and I tell Kelly this, too. Um, I love how you all do this, because it's, it's noticing teachers when no one's watching, you know, yeah. when, you know, and, and just the everyday kinds of things. So thank you. You are. I thank you, you very much. To our meeting yeah. Too, yeah. Because we don't see all that every day. Yeah. I mean, I, know I do. I love that. More than I do. But, oh, it's my pleasure. You know, I know Kelly gets a tremendous amount of joy from We that. appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to the um, action item section, and we're going to talk about Johnson. So I guess that's Jerry. safety money you approved last month. That money, um, it's an easier transition and it's easier path to the school to check if we attach it to a BG1. So we have changed the BG1 to show that we are using that money as part of that project. And then in future months when we get information um, on the parking lot that will shortly go out to bid, we would have to amend that BG1 again because that piece is several amended BG1s over the next few months. So it's just showing funding in different um, places on the form, but the total value is exactly the same as it was the last time we amended it. And it will enable us to get our $87,833 later this month or early next. Okay. 
So this recommended motion is the approval of the BG1 for 24 million, that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Revised BG1. You're revised. Okay. Right. Does anybody have questions before we? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm assuming all this is standard procedure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in okay. compliance and everything. I need a motion for the approval of the revised BG1 in the amount of $24,351,109 for the Johnson Elementary Replacement Project. So moved. Second? So, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I know, you tell us. You're in charge. <laughs> you tell us. What are we doing? It's you. It's you. Resolution to conduct facility projects. Yeah. So, as we talked last week, So I need a motion for the approval of a resolution to conduct facilities related projects under the provisions of House Bill 678. I just have a quick question. question. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Um, um, so the House Bill 678 allowed these projects to go forward without that, you know, pr that, those procedures. What's the resolution accomplish? What, what, it's just part of the law that the board has to adopt this resolution Got it. Okay. in order for us to be able to do, to do that. For instance, okay. once you adopt this resolution tonight, we will be able to go ahead and bid that parking lot project without waiting. We've submitted, submitted it to Kentucky Department of Education. Without the resolution, we have to wait for their approval to Got advertise it. the bid. With the resolution, we can go ahead and bid. So the, so the bill allowed us to do it, but to do it, you have to have a resolution Correct. to say you're going to do it. Otherwise, you fall under the existing regulations. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. That's right. Uh, so moved. And this is only a two-year window, right? Right, right now, yes. anyway. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right, so I moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. You're still up there. Our favorite thing. Uh, the final one is just, you know, um, bidding the custodial supplies, which again establishes the ceiling yep. that we will pay for these products. Um, we received quite a lot of interest uh, from most of our regular vendors that we use currently, as well as some more kind of more national brands. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I went through every one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm really upset about the toilet paper. Bit. <laughs> As always. Because everybody's hoarding the paper. It's in basements all over the country. You <laughs> well, I will tell you this. Back in March of 2020, when you couldn't find any anywhere, we had it and we were getting offers. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's supply and demand. They searched it. Right. Right. I know. They were. I know. Yes, they were. Yeah. yeah. Profit that's center. Good. Buy a bunch of them. Resale. Any other questions? So we'll do this again um, next year. Yeah. So based on where we are, chances it could go down next year. We, it could. Yeah. It could. Um, you know, we have verbiage in there that allows us after the, this year to go back to the vendors and say, would you, you know, like to um, hold your prices mm -hmm. for one year? Um, I did change the wording a little bit to allow, because most of them, because of certain products, said no. 
this year we kind of gave them the opportunity that if there were some they would hold on and some they would want to so like our friends in on this that we could do that so yep. if we have companies that, that say for 50 percent of these let's hold our prices for the next year um, assuming Any others? Okay, I need a motion for the approval to accept all bids and award contracts to the companies with the lowest or best bid that met individual item specifications. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. okay thank you. What's that? You want to shake close? Is it in your eyes? No. no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. Are you up? All right.
differences related to academic, academic standards and social studies. Um, so hopefully this will give them an answer for our future, but it's still newer as compared to the other academic content areas, and so I will have further self-study to do as it relates to those other areas. Um, student engagement strategies continue to be a priority across all schools, uh, and certainly the component of our eating plan at the elementary school level in particular. Uh, responsive interventions support our work with our special education supports, and then really our focus areas will continue to start to catalyze on the momentum as it has been established through the um, through the outlook of our of our strategic plan. So you see, just to make it, I think, look a little bit very simple because it looks like one school on the screen at one time, you will sort of see how all of the experiences the students have been allocated for professional learning really cross all sectors that they are responsible for as educators, whether it's core academic instruction um, that is needed to be worked on and that is being committed to, there is uh, unit design work, there's special education work, there's work towards comprehensive district improvement plans, school improvement plans. So I think that we have constructed, uh, collaboratively constructed, a student plan that meets district-wide needs, individual school needs, and will truly promote the effectiveness of our educators. So uh, we will deliver these materials, but in delivery on these key steps. Uh, that's when our first series of schools will be given a training for their student engagement interventions. Are you still doing all these? Uh, are they online, in person, a combination? I would say it's, it's what? All in person. Okay. <laughs> I think that um, for flexible considerations, mm -hmm. some of our teachers can take advantage of opportunities for virtual engagement and virtual completion of activities. But anything you see happening that appears as though it's on site, um, that is going to be an in person experience. So that's the real, the real challenge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? I like that you've given that everybody has input as to what their schools needed. And I know, especially at the high school, the, the ability to do course and content specific things is always really important for them. So I'm glad we have that. There's a really strong balance of alignment and individualization, is, which is quite yeah. impressive, actually. Yeah, that's good. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I need a motion. Does anybody have any other questions? I jumped the gun before. So moved. So well, I'll I said, second. I need a motion for the approval of the professional development plan for 22 23. Okay, so Brad so moved. Again. Who's I'll second? second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. as it relates to the components of that plan. So here are some examples of what we need to assure the commissioner of. We must make sure that if we do need to close schools to in-person instruction, that we have a plan in place to keep students learning. We have to make sure that we have a management system that will keep organized NCI. We have to make sure that um, we have a digital means by which to promote non-traditional instruction and that we can verify that our students and families have access to a device and to be able to use that device. Uh, we need to make sure that we have um, arrangements in place to meet the needs of our students outside of the school district. For example, partnerships specifically. Think free service, think transportation, well not really transportation, but think about those related services that students need uh, that still exist outside of our tutelage and we need to address those. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a communication 
the method in place, the lessons we learned in the Red MCI, and then how we are managing um, the social emotional needs of our students while they're absent from our in-person buildings. Um, we did assure, I believe Commissioner, that we will continuously provide professional learning for our educators so that our MCI programming, should we ever need it again, uh, is high quality. Uh, we will verify that our educators will work on the same days by which they would be their work would be able to be perfect. Records for students on MCI days, so we can take a glance and we'll see you, mm -hmm. but we can take participation data based on you engaging in what is assigned on school days. And then we have a written communication plan in place related to what we will do should we have to switch the very next day of the MCI. Now, you should be very comfortable in knowing, and as I, as I have reviewed those, that those are all strategies, those are all activities that we have done mm -hmm. each time we've needed to transition. Mm -hmm. way in accordance with the minimum expectations should we be required to do so. And so we certainly can ensure that we will have a, a continuation of learning plan in place. We will be prepared for MCI should it be necessary. In doing so, we can meet students' needs, uh, who, uh, those of you who, who are um, disabled and who have IEPs. Uh, we can do the other special populations of students' needs, such as those with visual and sound speech services, Should we need, it's all conditional, <laughs> should we need to meet minimum MCI modules <coughs> in that special situation? Questions? Mm -hmm. No questions at all. Okay, I need a motion for the approval of the continuation of learning play a diagnostic. So many, uh, question. Second. Oh, oh see? Sorry, sorry. I couldn't get my stupid thing to come on. Uh -huh. uh, are they, is the commissioner making this a mandatory action item, basically, from our perspective? So this is a required part of our continued See. growth as a school district, is right. that we will be prepared should an emergency right. rise in need. But is he the one saying that it needs to be an action item? I mean, it just seems to me like he's wanting assurances, right? Okay, so is there a specific format that this whole thing goes under, or is this just kind of, a, okay, we need assurances, to this extent, you guys figure it out. So the expectation would be that in this part of the school year, that as a part of our continued development as a school district, continued improvement, that we will continue to improve if we were to need to move into MPI. So the state and, and certainly the commissioner have articulated minimum expectations for what will be required for the district should you elect to institute MPI. We are simply ensuring that, you know what, we will absolutely be prepared to meet these minimum expectations should we need to utilize this resource. The, the, the okay. comprehensive district improvement plan is a required process. Right, right. This, this is, this is sort of the, the final the piece of it. That this is obviously new. We never did this before. We obviously know why we're doing it. But is this going to be the way it is going forward and it will all be part of that plan? This is a definitely an articulated part of the overall CBA yeah. process in law. Um, so yes, that's was kind of my point. I mean, some of this just seems like common sense and understood, and I think we did a better job than most because you guys mm -hmm. did a wonderful job. I think that's fine. We have to have some verified that all school districts across the state will have these similar experiences. Medical students. We just are more prepared. So he's not throwing darts at us is what I'm saying. No, sir. Okay. Yeah, this, this, I, truthfully, it's, it's really about districts that did not right. adhere to, to these well, that's kind of what I figured, but we just fall into the category so to speak. It's not right. specific. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. All right. I need a motion for the approval of the continuation of learning plan diagnostic. I move. Second? Second. Oh. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Okay. The employee wellness incentive. Is this your section, Brian? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, historically, we have participated in our Firecracker 5000, right? Um, but it's the, uh, the annual um, uh, race prior for the 4th of July. And so one of the, uh, the steps that we've taken to encourage involvement is to pay for uh, employee registration and a T-shirt. And so we're asking uh, for a continuation of this program. It's a fun event, and uh, I think it's a good thing to participate in. Okay. Any questions? All right. I need a motion for the approval of the Employee Wellness Incentive for Employee Participation in the 2022 YMCA Firecracker 5K. Second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. All right. And then are you still, second still me? Too? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, as, as Jerry rebid some of our uh, custodial supplies, um, we did have a provision to, to request a, a holding of prices for our publishing services, uh, which entail our, our school calendar that we have in print form, as well as uh, two editions of our, of our traditions on an annual basis. Um, our current publisher uh, said that there's been significant and even record increases to, uh, to the printing costs. Uh, and that they would not be able to hold that same price for us from the previous year. And so, um, so we did uh, last month ask for, uh, for proposals. We received two bids, uh, one from Harmony Publishing and one from Living Media. Um, and uh, when, you, uh, when you look at both the school calendar pricing uh, combined with the two editions of, of Traditions, uh, Living Media actually had the, had the low bid uh, for this uh, for this next, uh, well, it, based on our RFP. And so uh, I am making the recommendation that we accept that low bid and that we, um, we do both of our, our traditions, additions uh, through Living Media and also have them maintain the school calendar publishing as well. Uh, the total price uh, is, is actually a, a little less than what our total price was last year. But that's a little bit deceiving in that our, our number of, of units for our school calendar are, are less. And so uh, when you look at the cost for traditions, it's a little bit up uh, with, with the winning bid. Um, but the total, total cost when we, when we decreased our, our volume of, of calendars is, is slightly less. Okay. So um, I'm just wondering if it's on the website, do we still need a physical calendar? That's part of the reason why we, we reduced the number okay. uh, of physical calendars. I do think there are a, a number of people that still like to have okay. the, the physical calendar. So I, um, I would say for the cost that we're putting into it, it, it it's something that, um, that people appreciate. And um, okay. that, that would be my opinion. Um, you, you may be able to contribute even more to that, but um, that's part of why we reduced the, the volume of it. We have had people say, you know, is there a place that we can go online and, and look at it? So mm -hmm. you're saying that that will be a place. To do oh, yeah, there's okay. a there's a very um, vibrant way to, to get online. If mm -hmm. you use our app, you can, you can see everything and, and, and it's updated mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Right. The the calendars themselves are, um, I mean, they're they're pretty. They stay the same right. all year long. They're not right. updated. So there could be come a time where um, if we didn't want to continue to publish a calendar, we. Could, we could get to that point. I, I don't know that we're there, uh, or I wouldn't make that recommendation yet. Okay. Any other questions? I think it's also possible we get to a time where traditions volume is reduced as well. So currently, we're uh, we're sending it to to quite a number of households, even outside of our zip code. So so we we have some ideas as to how to reduce that. Okay. Anything else? What? <laughs> All right, I need a motion for the approval to accept all bids received and award contracts for publishing services to the lowest bidder, which was Living Media, in the amount of 21400 to produce two issues of tradition and 4100 to produce the school calendar for a total of 25500 for publishing services for 2022-23. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You good, Peggy? We can go. Um, uh, yeah. Um, the next section is are the um, discussion items. So board committees. Does anybody have any updates on board committees? 
No? No. Okay. And then um, legislative update. You want to take that, Brian? Yeah, probably should have done it at the start of the meeting. I know. Like, um, I know. We have been following a, a number of legislative uh, topics. Uh, I'm not going to highlight all of all of the ones that we've, we've maintained some of our discussion around or uh, or even the lobbying efforts that we've had with, with our representatives um, or the time we've spent in Frankfurt or the meetings that we've had uh, around all of those pieces. Uh, three that, that we have kept um, probably the most attention around has been um, uh, House Bill 1 established a budget. And in some ways, um, uh, a, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of educators within the state were, were pleased with, with the budget. We did see an increase in SEEK in our SEEK base. Uh, we had a $100 increase in this current year. We'll, we'll have an, an additional 100 increase in the second year of the biennium. Um, there was uh, some money dedicated towards transportation. It doesn't help us too much. Um, and they did fund all day kindergarten for the next two years uh, as well. Um, that is still not written into permanency, so the full-day kindergarten's in the budget. It's not necessarily in statute that it is something that, um, uh, that we'll, we'll maintain. Um, another uh, bill that, was, uh, that, that went through uh, both houses was vetoed, and eventually the veto was overridden with Senate Bill 1. Uh, Senate Bill 1 does change some of the governance uh, within the schools, um, it's more of a collaborative process between uh, the superintendent is, and the site-based councils, uh, particularly in the areas of principal selection, should there be a vacancy, uh, and curriculum selection. Um, is uh, Once again, it, it sort of mirrors how we've approached both of those topics in our district for a period of time, which has been highly collaborative. Um, and, and, and this change uh, to Senate Bill 1, uh, should the collaboration not... Um, there not be agreement, then it becomes a, a superintendent decision um, in consultation with the Board of Education. Uh, Senate Bill 1 also has a, a, a couple topics that were uh, a little bit more controversial as it added some uh, social studies, specific social studies content, and some, some guidelines around controversial topics. And so we'll see how that sort of plays out. And then House Bill 9 was around charter schools. Uh, again, not something um, as a... Um, you know, and I won't speak for the full Board of Education, um, but, but as, as educators, as, as, as superintendents across the state, um, most of the, the groups that support public education, anytime that you're, you're siphoning money away from uh, already inadequately funded systems, uh, it, it's a concern for us. And so um, in, in a lot of ways, we see uh, the charter school bills uh, having that very potential. In particular, this change within House Bill 9 uh, takes locally raised dollars uh, that, that are imposed through local taxation uh, and, and sends those, uh, those local tax dollars uh, to um, uh, semi-public schools, perhaps even outside of our district, that, may, that have zero oversight by the Board of Education that actually levies the taxes. And so that is a concern. Uh, it's a, that's one that we've, we've fought. I continue... Um, to, to advocate against that, I think we'll see some pretty unified action around that, that part of it, which has some suspect constitutionality. So those were the three that we followed the most. I'm happy to, to talk to any other legislation that, that, that you've seen. Uh, we've discussed many uh, in addition to that. We've followed how, SRO bills and comment period bills and all kinds of different things, but happy to discuss any of those or answer any questions. Well, it had no action. That's a that's an old bill. So, it it there it wasn't touched. It was a, a twenty. You know, that's I can't. I've said it before many times. I'll say it again. It doesn't seem to be holding much water with anybody, but that's a huge concern for this city, this district, everybody involved, every taxpayer in this community. This thing will slap us upside the head if we don't do something about it. Yeah. And it's House Bill 563. Yeah. Um, is, is, is Which what means that you don't have to live here and pay taxes here, but your kid can go to school here. Should be obvious what the detrimental factor is there. Yeah. So. 
I don't think anybody, any of us really bought our dream home in Fort Thomas, even though I know not everybody here lives in Fort Thomas, but there's a reason why we came here. That's all I'll say on it. Somebody better band together and start doing something about it or it could be seriously detrimental. I mean, the trade that I'm in, what I do, I see this every day. I know why people move here. They move here for the schools. Not every single person, but the greatest majority. There are a lot of negative things that can happen to this community if this is allowed to happen. And, and the interesting um, thing is, is and, and as you discuss it, we probably spent more time lobbying our, our local um, legislative officials around this law, which was passed last year, than any of the other laws that, that were, were in the hopper. Um, and, and to your point, Brad, there, there's not a lot of... Um, there's not a lot of movement on it, on, on really on either side, and it has some very potential negative impact on Fort Thomas. Um, the, the implementation of that law is supposed to be effective July 1st uh, of this year. What it really says is that it requires that, that we have um, um, policies around uh, non-resident attendance within our, our school district. Our intention currently, unless I'm directed differently by this Board of Education, is that we will maintain the current policy that we have around um, uh, around non-resident education, and, and and frankly, um, there's there's not really anything in the law that would say we can't. So um, so that's our current. As you know, it's a very great issue, and you know while it's not new legislation, it's not been implemented yet. Now they're talking about actual implementation. Correct. And people are talking about it. People are hearing about it, and it's hitting a little closer to home far as becoming a reality. Agree 100%. Mm -hmm. I would rather us be proactive than reactive. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but that's all I got on it. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay, um, the next section is the approval of the consent agenda. I need a motion with all the board members having had the opportunity to review and pursue any questions about all the items contained in the, in the um, consent, agenda, consent agenda. I need approval of that agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, and then is there any other business? Any other business from anybody else? No. no? Okay. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.